fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeat of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Rico. Are you Silver? Hey! Clarabelle Hornblow was busy in the kitchen of her ranch house when she heard the voice of Thunder Martin, mule skinner and foreman of her ranch, as he reined up outside. <sighs> Leave it to that muttonhead Thunder Martin to come riding up just when I got the supper dishes done. Well, good evening, Clarabelle. Evening, my! Thunder Martin, where have you been? You've been gone all afternoon. Ah, uh, Clarabelle, it's no use getting all riled up about nothing. Anyhow, I told you I was going to town. You know darn well I did. And what's more, if you say one word about being hungry, I'll take the broom, dear. Now, speak up. What you been doing? Oh, now, Clarabella, I'll tell you if you give me a chance. Go ahead, then. It better be good. Start talking. Well, I was trying to find something special to buy for your birthday. That's what. For my... Oh, thunder. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, now, Clarabella... You didn't think I'd go and forget your birthday, did you? Well, where is it? What'd you bring me, Thunder? Bring it out so I can get busy scraping up some vittles for you. You must be most starved. Uh, truth is, I'm hungry as a grizzly. I, I got the present right outside, Clarabelle. I'll go bring it in right now. Now, now don't you look till I get in with you. I me. won't. Hurry up. I'm dying of curiosity. Can to learn to keep my big mouth shut. Imagine that soft hearted hombre thinking of my birthday. Now, wait till I get it out from under my coat now. Now, look. <laughs> Great jumping Josephus. What in thunderation is that supposed to be? Isn't that the cutest trick you ever laid your eyes on, Claire Bell? That's a poodle. Full grown, too. Even if it is only as big as a jackrabbit. Well, of all the... Oh, no, look at that. He likes you, Clarabelle. You, you see how he tries Thunder to... Martin! You no good, addle-headed, bandy lay coyote! What do you mean bringing that curly-haired imitation of a lamb's tail into the ranch house? Get that flea hound out of here this minute! You hear me? But, Clarabelle, that's your birthday present. There's no other like it in the whole territory. If you're fool enough to spend your money for something like that, you can give it to someone else. Get that mud out of here, Prano. Oh, Claire 
Val, look at that. Now you're wet and hurt his feelings. Come here, Francois. Oh, come to Papa. That settles it. Francois, of all the names for any critter, and especially that... That... Uh, get it out of here, do you hear me? And you get out, too. But, Clarabelle, the little fella's hungry. And I am, too. It's getting dark. Well, all right. Give you both something to eat. That pesky flea hound can stay in the kitchen for the night. Uh, gee, now, Clarabelle, I knew Wait you... a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Tomorrow you take that critter back to town and give him away. I won't have anything like that crawling around this spread, understand? Oh, Clarabelle. That's my final word on it. Remember that. Huh. Francois. <laughs> Meantime, two rough-looking strangers were sitting at a corner table in the town cafe, talking in a confidential tone. Jess, what did you find out from Pete before he left territorial prison, Tom? I got your message saying to meet you here and get in on something good that Pete put you wise to. Now, look, Jake, the less you mention that prison, the better. Now, here's the deal. Before I left Pete, he told me about a spread where he used to work as a hand. The Bar H. It's owned by a woman. You must mean the spread that's owned by Clarabelle Hornblow. Yep, that's the one. Pete said she has a cash box in her ranch house. She always keeps it full of cash so as to be ready for quick deals. And she's always trying to keep ahead of the hombre who owns a spread next to hers. An hombre called Jeremiah Warren. Oh. Well, wait a minute, Tom. I happen to know she's got a big, tough hombre out there as foreman. A mule skinner named Thunder Martin. He's nobody to fool around with. I know about him. That's where we come in, Jake. What do you mean? Martin comes in here nearly every evening. It'll be up to us to see that he stays here in town till Connors finishes up at the Bar H tonight. I don't know too much about Connors. He used to work out this way with a couple of other hombres who were sent out from St. Louis by a railroad. Railroad? Yeah. They've started building a railroad from St. Louis out this way. Now, Connors and the others are out here buying up land for the right-of-way. So oh, then Connors isn't with them now? No. He was accused of cheating the company, so he got fired. But he still has his credentials. Before they get wise to what's happening, he's going to pull a few fast deals. This one will be the first. Oh, I guess he's plenty smart at that. Yeah, he sure is. Why, Connors can... Hey, hello there. Here comes Thunder Martin now. I'll go tell Connors to get started. You get Martin to come to the table for a drink. All right. That won't be long, Jake. Make sure you do what you're supposed to. Early that same evening, two horsemen had ridden to a small grove in the hills not far from the Bar 8 spread. They had pitched camp, eaten a light supper, and then sat near the campfire talking. They were the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto. Maybe we stop by ranch, see Thunder Martin, Hornblow woman, Kemosabe. Well, I'd like to see our friends, Tonto. But I don't want the fact known that we're in this vicinity. <laughs> you know, Thunder Martin, even if we tell him not to mention it, he's liable to forget and say something in the town cafe. Uh, Thunder mean well, but him not keep mouth shut at times. That's right. Uh, maybe Thunder who leave prison not come here. I feel sure he did, Tonto. His name is Tom Miller. The prison warden told me Miller used to receive mail from the town of Piketon near here. Why we follow Tom Miller? He was uh, sent to territorial prison four years ago for selling rifles and whiskey to the Indians. Oh, well, that's not good. Before long, construction will be started on the railroad through this territory. So far, the Indian tribes around here are friendly. But if a man like Tom Miller should get them aroused... Ah, uh, that's not good either. Then we come to watch Miller? Just to make sure he doesn't start his old tricks with the Indians, Tonto. It's important to the West that nothing interferes with the progress of the railroad.
meantime, at the Bar H Ranch House, Clarabelle Hornblow was in the living room checking her accounts when she heard someone knocking on the door. Come on in. The door's not locked. Good evening. Don't stand there gawking. Come in and shut the door. Who are you, stranger? What you want? My name is Connors, ma'am. I take it that you're Mrs. Jeremiah Warren. Nope. The Warren spreads about three miles west of here, Mr. Connors. This is my spread, the Bar H. My name's Clarabelle Hornblow. Miss Hornblow. Sorry, I came to the wrong place. Warren and I did all our talking in town, so I've never been to his ranch house. No need to apologize. Uh, fixing to buy some cattle, maybe? No, no, I'm not a cattle buyer. Mm. Just a friendly visit, huh? No, ma'am. Purely a business deal, Miss Hornblow. Business deal? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not one to butt into other people's business, so I'm not asking you what it is. It's too bad I didn't come to you first about this deal. I, uh, didn't know you were so easy to talk to. Who, me? Why, I'm always ready to talk a good business deal over with anybody, Mr. Connors. Of course, I'm not trying to pry, but... If I'm missing out on anything, I'd like to be told. All right. I'll tell you about it. I have the paper here for Warren already signed. But I could fill in your name instead of his if I make a better deal with you. Get to the point, Mr. Connors. Well, first, let me show you this card. Hmm. Well, I declare. And you're a representative of the railroad. That card shows that I am. Oh, here's the card. Thank you. Uh, what business you got to discuss? Two years ago, the railroad bought a strip of land for a right-of-way between your spread and Warren. Yeah. We each sold them a one-mile strip, a hundred feet wide. That's right. The railroad now owns a mile strip that's two hundred feet wide between your ranch and his. What about it? Just this. What would you say if I tell you that the railroad decided not to use that land and are willing to sell it for less than they paid for it? What? You mean Warren was fixing to buy back his strip and mine, too? Sure. But if you decide you're interested... Darn right I'm interested. That's fine land with water on it. What's Warren offered for it? Well, the railroad paid 10000 for it. Warren has a chance to buy it back for 5000 Now, see here, Connors. There's no reason why I shouldn't have a chance to bid in on that strip. Well, as a matter of fact, you could have it for the same price if you can make a quicker deal than Warren. I'm anxious to get away from Piketon. He won't have the money till late tomorrow. <laughs> I can do better than that. Well, As a matter of really fact, can't... I can close the deal right now. I got enough cash here to do it. Fine, fine. You're a very smart woman, Miss Hornblow. I have the paper with me. All I have to do is fill in your name. I've already signed it for the railroad. Oh, sit down, sit down. There's pen and ink. Mm-hmm. I'll fill this in now. It's hot tonight. I'll open the door for a bit of air. Yeah. Paper's ready. Now, if you get the cash... Well, sure. Keep my cash box in a hidden place in the kitchen. I'll get the money for you. Here, you. Come here. Well, a poodle, huh? Where did you get that? The foreman brought it home, but it isn't stamped. <laughs> Friendly little fella, isn't he, huh? Hey, hey, you got the paper. Give me that paper, you little foreman. Watch out, he's running the open door. Come back here. Come back, I say. There he goes with the paper in his mouth, ordering credit. I'll go after him and get that paper. Drop that. Here, fella. Here, boy. Here. Come on. Drop it. Uh, Draft that dog. I chased him clean out to the trail, but he still had the paper. I had to give up. He thought I was playing a game with him. Well, now, I can meet you in town in the morning, get another deed, and then we'll... The deed sign, and your dog has it. Now pay up. Nothing doing, mister. You don't get the money. Well, so this I... is a do. Hey, now. What's the idea of drawing a gun on me? I'll relieve you of your guns. And I'll give you just two minutes to get that cash and turn it over to me. Now get moving. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Clarabelle Hornblow was taken by surprise when Connors drew a gun and demanded the cash. She realized something was wrong with the deal immediately and became angry. So all that talk about a deal was just crooked talk, huh, mister? Maybe it was. <laughs> You're loco enough to believe it anyway. <laughs> all right. But after you leave here, I'll have a posse after you and two shakes of a lamb's tail. When I leave, I'm taking all you have in the cash box. And you're going to ride with me. Till I can think of how to get rid of you without implicating myself. Now get me the cash. Half an hour later, as the Lone Ranger and Tonto prepared to roll in their blankets for the night... They heard a strange, distant noise. You hear strange sound, Kimosabe? Yes. I thought for a moment it might be a coyote. No, that not sound like coyote. That sound like dog. Let's walk up the trail and find out, Tonto. Uh Sounds as though it scared up a rabbit or something. Uh The moon's bright enough to... Oh, look there, Tonto. It is a small dog. Uh Me not see dog look like that, Kimus. <laughs> it's a poodle. Here, fella. Here, boy. Come here. Come on. Come on. <laughs> nice, fella. Take it easy. Oh, here's a paper he's been playing with. I'll strike a match and see what it is. A bit of it's torn away. Uh, what, what paper say? Hmm. Something's wrong about this, Toto. Why you say that? This is a deed dated today. Selling the railroad strip of land to Clarabelle Hornblow. I happen to know the railroad has no intention of selling that right away. They're planning to start construction on it very soon. But if deed give land to Clarabelle... Bring the dog, Toto. We'll get the horses and ride over to Clarabelle's right now. I want to find out about this. Come on. Ah. Wait here, Toto. I'll carry the dog in. Come here, little fella. Come on now. Funny, the lights are on. No one answers. I'll try the door. Toto! What? What happened? What's your find, Kimasabi? Something's happened here. There's a chair overturned. Let's go inside. There you are, little fella. Look, they're on the floor. A cash box. It's empty. Clarabelle! Clarabelle! No one here, seemed like. We'll go outside and look around. Stay there, little fella. Here, fresh tracks, Kimasabi. He find tracks of two horses. We'll cut sign on those tracks, Toto. Easy, steady, sir. <laughs> Meantime, in town, Thunder Martin was still in the cafe with Connor's two friends, Tom and Jake. Come on. Have another drink with us, Thunder. No, no more. I, I know when I had enough. Oh. Well, I gotta be getting along. Hey, hold on. Don't go yet. <laughs> Now, look at here, Tom. Don't try to hold me in my chair when I want to get up. It ain't healthy. Maybe it isn't healthy for you to try to go, Thunder. Uh, Just what do you mean by that? I'm going right now and nothing's going to stop me, see? This will stop you, Thunder. Uh, Sit down. Well, I'll be a second cousin to a mule if you don't have a gun on me. That's right. We want you to stay a while, don't we, Jake? Yeah, we sure do, Tom. Oh, now, uh, don't tell me you hombres have become outrageous when I'm not in the mood, huh? Yeah. Oh, Why, you yeah. dirty, sneaking coyote! Hey, look out! Look out! Hit him, Tom! Hit him! I'm gonna enjoy this! Here goes! Oh! Here's another way! Several miles from town, on a trail leading through the hills, Clarabelle Hornblow, her hands bound to the pommel of her saddle, rode in an angry and contemptuous mood. 
She glared balefully at the back of the man who led her horse behind his own. Finally, she spoke. I hope you know what you're doing, you smooth-tongued, yellow-livered lizard. <laughs> I sure do, man. You won't get away with this. Ride up this creek a bit. And then where you see those thick bushes on the other bank, we'll go out of the water. Behind those bushes is a shack left by the surveyors who laid out the railroad strip. Well, what about it? That shack's well hidden, Miss Hornblow. Two friends are meeting me there a little later. And we'll leave you, tied up and gagged. <laughs> but by the time someone finds you, we'll be far off and you'll be plenty hungry. time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the point where Connor's tracks entered the creek. Oh, 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 oh. The trail ends here at this creek, Tonto. Because of that rocky wall just beyond, they couldn't ride further in that direction. Uh, and what do you think them do? Probably rode in the creek for a short distance, then came out on this side again and hit one of the trails that leads out of this valley. And that right. We'll separate. You go up the creek a bit. I'll ride down. We'll each look for tracks on this side. All right, let's get going. We'll meet back here. Hold on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Tonto had ridden a short distance upstream on the near side of the creek. Suddenly, he drew rein and listened. His sharp ears had caught the sound of horses approaching in the shallow water below him. Tonto was hidden by some large boulders on the bank. As he waited on Scout, he heard a voice as the horseman passed. Here's the bushes where we turn in, Jake. Come on. All right, get up there. Come on. Tonto waited a moment and observed the spot where Tom and Jake left the creek. Then silently, urging his horse into motion, he turned around and rode back downstream to find the Lone Ranger. Inside the shack, Connors looked up as the door opened and Tom and Jake entered. What the devil happened to you two? Oh, that army Thunder Martin jumped us in the cafe. It uh, had all we could do to get away. Good for thunder! <laughs> Look at that black eye, will you? And that swollen jaw! Oh, shut up, you. I... Hey, what's she doing here, Connors? Yeah, what you got her tied up here in the shack for? The plan went haywire because of a shaggy little dog she had there. I decided to come out in the open, grab her money, and bring her dog along so she couldn't give the alarm before we could get away from here. If you had any nerve, he'd have come into my house like a regular outlaw and taken a chance of fighting it out with me. Instead of that, he comes sniveling in like a sly fox, then gets the drop on me when I listen to his flossy talk. Stick a gag in her mouth, Jake. I'm tired of hearing her yet. Sure, I'll use my neckerchief. You get away from me with that dirty rag, you hear? If you try to do oh, it, you... Uh. That shut her up. What are we going to do with her, Connors? Killing's not in my line. Leave her right here. Somebody will find her in a couple of days, maybe. <laughs> Here's the cash I got from her place. Good. Let's divide it. Then pull stakes and get out of this territory tonight. That cash stays here. So do all of you. Reach! Who's that? An owl who? This will take care of him. Oh, my shoulder! Anyone else want to try? No, don't try to draw, Connors. He's too quick. Hello. Uh, here, Kimasami. Take their guns. Uh, me get them. Oh, 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 oh. All right, put them up on. Take it easy, Thunder. Where the ball that You. That's right. Well, I, I brung the sheriff for the posse. We was riding in the creek just opposite here when I heard that shot. Where's Clarabelle? What'd they do with her? If, if they hurt one <laughs> hair of her head out... Move aside, Connie. There she is on that cot, looking very much alive. What? Clarabelle... Tied and gagged? Oh! <laughs> hey, Clarabelle, this is my chance to get the last word. Now, if you wasn't so stubborn and pig-headed about that present I bought uh, you... I'd better take it easy, Thunder. Huh? Yeah, here, I'll loosen the gag, Clarabelle. <coughs> One more. There. Now, no, 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 Clarabelle, I was only... Get these when cords I... off of me. All right, I'll cut them... <laughs> There you are. Oh, no, Clarabelle. I, I... 
Oh, don't worry, Thunder. I heard what you said when you busted in here. And as for that poodle... It was because of the poodle that we came here, Clarabelle. We found him with that deed. I'm sure glad to see you. You and Todd are both. So Francois got you into this, huh? Uh, Who? Francois. That's my poodle's name. He's much to look at, but it did me a good turn. Where is he now? Well, I, 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 he's right here, Clarabelle. Uh, we, we stopped by the ranch on the way and brought him along. Uh, one of the men's holding him. Well, here he is. Go to Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't that cute, Thunder? Well, we'll leave now, Clarabelle. I guess you and Thunder and the sheriff can handle things. Come along, Toto. Adios. Goodbye. Thanks for what you've done for me. All right, boys. Get them mealy mouth, no good crooks out of here. That's my money on the table they was trying to steal. I've, I've yet decided to keep little Francois Clarabelle. Of course I'm going to keep him. If it hadn't have been for him, I'd have fallen for that swindle and lost my money. And what's more, he got the Lone Ranger on the track of Connors. Was that masked man the Lone Ranger? Sure was. And he's a friend of Thunder and me, too. And a friend of Francois Clarabelle. Thunder Martin, you do and say the darndest things. But we sort of go for it, hook, line, and sinker. Don't we, Francois? <laughs> <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.